Okay, guys, we left off with um, Andrew Johnson uh, becoming the president and instituting his plan for reconstruction, which was called Restoration. And uh, Section 2 of Chapter 17 talks about how the radical Republicans um, really have enough of Andrew Johnson and try and take over Reconstruction themselves from the Congress side of Let's go ahead and look at what happens. So um, under Johnson's plan called Restoration, Southern states were starting to form new governments that met his requirements. Now under his requirements, high ranking Confederate officials were able to take office. And one of those was Alexander Stevens. Um, he was the vice president of the Confederacy and yet had been elected into Congress just a year or so after the Civil War, which is really, if you think about it, kind of not a good idea. Do you want to put those people in charge of the federal government or have a say in the federal government after what they did? The answer is typically no, but you know, um, Andrew Johnson wasn't really interested in that. So uh, the Republicans who controlled Congress refused to seat them. Um, in fact, Republicans would not admit Southern states under Johnson's plan. So you have the Congress basically fighting against the president as to how to deal with this reconstruction issue. On top of that, Andrew Johnson was not interested in giving African Americans any rights in the South. That was not changing. In fact, what he actually allowed to happen were laws passed by Southern legislatures, that means Southern states, they were known as black codes. Uh, these black codes allowed plantation owners to exploit freed men. Now, to exploit someone means to take advantage of them. And that's exactly what Black Codes did. They allowed plantation owners to take advantage of these newly freed slaves. So um, what an example, how about some examples of Black Codes? So if you were an unemployed African-American, um, they would arrest you and say you had to pay a fine. Now, if you're unemployed, you don't have money and you can't pay a fine. So they said, well, I'll tell you what, if you uh, work for this plantation owner, for a certain amount of time, it will make up for your fine. Or orphan children, orphan African-American children would work as un unpaid apprentices. So this is slavery in disguise. It is a form of slavery without calling it slavery. That is what black codes allowed Southern states to do under Andrew Johnson. Um, not only that, but um, we're gonna see how Andrew Johnson dealt with uh, the Freedmen's Bureau and the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which we're going to talk about right now. So Congress allowed the Freedmen's Bureau to have special courts that would prosecute individuals violating the rights of African Americans. Um, so even that to have special courts different than other courts in the United States is a very strange thing, but it was very strange times. So uh, Congress tried to pass some laws to help African Americans gain new rights. And one of these was the Civil Rights Act's sorry, the Civil Rights Act of 1866. This granted full citizenship to African Americans and allowed the government to protect their rights. This also overruled the Dred Scott decision, which if you remember, Dred Scott was that, freed, that slave whose master died, whose slave owner died, and uh, basically the Supreme Court said that Dred Scott wasn't a citizen because he was property. Now, giving full citizenship to African Americans overrules this Dred Scott decision, which was a pretty big deal right before the Civil War. Well, these two things, the Freedmen's Bureau, Civil Rights Act, these were two things that were trying to help African Americans desperately. And President Johnson vetoes both of these things. He vetoes the Freedmen's Bureau bill, which basically refunded it, and he also vetoed the Civil Rights Act. Now, that tells you exactly what kind of a person he was, what kind of a president he was. Um, he thought that Congress was trying to take more power away from the presidency, that Congress was overstepping its bounds. Um, but because there were so many Republicans in Congress, you know, it was just after the Civil War, they had enough votes to basically override or defeat President Johnson's veto. But that's all they needed to know. If Johnson was going to be vetoing those kinds of bills and acts, um, they did not want him to have any power at all. And so um, Congress then, afraid that African Americans would lose their rights granted in the Civil Rights Act because of Johnson, they passed the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment grants full citizenship to anyone born in the USA. So they basically take out um, race or color when it comes to being born on the land of the United States of America. 
So states not abiding by this law could lose their representation in Congress. And Tennessee was the only Southern state to ratify the 14th Amendment until 1868. So yay for Tennessee. Uh, they were the only ones. And this becomes a major issue in the congressional elections of 1866. So this is the midterm elections where Congress gets um, new, some new congressmen and new senators. And Johnson, Andrew Johnson, actually went out and campaigned against the 14th Amendment. He desperately did not want African Americans to be considered citizens um, and therefore given the right to vote. Um, and so he goes out, he tries to get people to vote against the amendment. It doesn't really work. And so he really starts to lose um, any kind of public support at all as the president of the United States. Um, this leads to Congress passing something called the Radical Reconstruction Act of 1867. Now this calls for a new creation of governments in the 10 states that did not ratify the 14th Amendment. So remember, there were 11 states in the Confederacy that seceded from the Union. Tennessee did pass the 14th Amendment, so they're not included in this. What Congress does is they take those 10 states left from the Confederacy and they divide them into five military districts with a military commander as a governor. So uh, when you read the pages in the book, there's going to be a map there and I want you to look at they take those 10 states and they kind of lump them together and they create these five military districts. Congress appoints a military commander over each one of these districts and they basically oversee the uh, creation of these new rights to African Americans in the South. They're given the right to vote, Confederate leaders could not hold political office, and military leaders begin registering people to vote. It's like, come on, if you're not registered to vote, let's get you in there, especially African Americans. Now the, the white Southerners down there, they were really mad. In fact, they were like, if this is the way you're gonna treat us, fine, then we won't vote. Well, does that make a lot of sense? Like you're mad, so you're like, we're not gonna go out for the vote. Well, if you don't go out for the vote, you're not gonna have a say. And so uh, white Southerners refused to take part in these midterm elections, but you know who did take part? African Americans. They came out in bunches to vote because it was something they had never been able to do before. And you know what they did? They voted Republicans into office. They voted in the people that wanted to give them rights. And so by 1868, the Republicans basically controlled, they were uh, all seven of those 10 states that were in those military districts. They were in charge of the state legislatures. They had um, voted Republican congressmen and senators into the federal Congress. Um, and so by 1870, Mississippi, Virginia, and Texas were also admitted. So that's all 10 states under that Radical Reconstruction Act admitted into the Union. Now Johnson, of course, you know he's like, he's lost all his power. He was strongly opposed by Congress, but as the commander in chief, he could control military officers. And so Congress starts passing laws to try and limit Johnson's power. And one of these laws that they passed was called the Tenure of Office Act. That meant that the president could not remove government officials without Senate approval. You couldn't just up and fire someone without the Senate approving um, the removal of a particular non-elected official, right? And one of these people that he, while Congress was not in session, uh, Johnson suspends the Secretary of War, Ed, Edwin Stanton. Now, this was done specifically in the face of Congress. He knew what he was doing, but he was like, you know, you can't stop me. And so um, when this happens, the House of Representatives officially impeaches Johnson. It means they formally charge him with wrongdoing. The wrongdoing was breaking the, the Tenure of Office Act. Now, Johnson is the first president of the United States to be impeached. He was charged with wrongdoing, going against the Tenure of Office Act. Now, you know from experience this year that the House of Representatives brings forth the charges, the impeachment, but the trial is held in the Senate. So Johnson will have his trial, and his trial lasts three months, and he was found not guilty by one vote. A lot of people think that Johnson was a little set up. It's like, you know, Congress was trying to tell the president what to do, so were they both in the wrong, maybe Congress, you know, passing laws saying what the president can or cannot do. Don't know how constitutional that is. But Johnson was a crummy president. And so, you know, that's the way it goes. And so the presidential election of 1868 
you can bet the Republicans are not going to support Andrew Johnson. In fact, they don't. <laughs> they um, pick Ulysses S. Grant. Grant is going to win the presidential election of 1868 in a landslide. And immediately after he becomes president, they pass the 15th Amendment, which says you cannot deny the right to vote to anyone based on their race, color, or previous servitude. Now, the important word that's missing there, ladies, if you didn't, you didn't hear it because it's not there, is gender. Women still did not have the right to vote. But the 15th Amendment uh, was passed in the hope that African Americans would be able to protect themselves as far as voting laws. So this is the end of Section 2 of Chapter 17. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk, and I will see you next time.